Sunday worship service of Fountain of Faith Baptist Church. We're so glad to have you with us this morning, and what a special morning it is. I'm Reverend Mark Kane, Senior Pastor, and I want to wish all the mothers of Fountain of Faith Baptist Church and mothers throughout the community and throughout the land a very happy Mother's Day. You deserve it. We appreciate you, as well as all mothers today. Uh, so in partnership uh, with our elders, our deacons, auxiliary leaders, and the entire church body, we continue to count it a privilege as we aspire to live up to our church's motto, which is to meet the lost where they are, introduce them to the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to feed their souls with sound Bible doctrine. Uh, where we're located, again, our physical address is 7887 Beechnut Street, Houston, Texas, zip code is 77074 where we meet in the beautiful chapel on the College Park campus. You'll find us on the web at uh, www.fofbchouston.org, as well as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we thank God that uh, we are a family-oriented church, Bible-based. Uh, we are into it for what we can get out of the outcome for the gospel of Christ in our communities and in our families. Mother's Day. What an awesome day it is today. I would be remiss if I did not have a Bible lesson for you on Mother's Day. I want to share just a couple of quips with you, uh, lighthearted quips, before we get started. Some person said, a mother's work is never done. Uh, matter of fact, they say most mothers are physically handicapped because they only have two hands. Isn't that the truth? I know you're saying amen right now. Another said, the quickest way uh, for a mother to get her children's attention is to sit down and look as if she's comfortable. Isn't that something? That's just what it means, that a, work, a mother's work is never done. But we thank God for all of our mothers whose primary uh, goal, uh, primary uh, uh, interest is to give their children's roots, roots and wings. One mother put it this way, uh, being a mother uh, or even a father is not at all uh, uh, one of the things that can hamper us from having the great joys in life. As a matter of fact, being a mother is one of the greatest joys, but it can also represent a personal sacrifice and a challenge. Everything of value is expensive and children are no exception to that rule. And also Dr. James Dobson, he agrees with that as well. So I want us to be grateful for what our mothers bring to the table. Uh, we all have precious memories of our mothers. Uh, as we move forward uh, here at Father of the Faith Baptist Church, remember who we are. Uh, we also believe that God has wired us for worship and created us for praise. And true to our name, we proclaim Matthew 5, 6, where it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I have no doubt that God would never lead a thirsty soul to a dry well. And so we want you to come and drink God's rejuvenating and refreshing water that's found in his word. Now as the city begins to open up the state and the nation, uh, my prayer for you is that you stay safe and that you stay encouraged during this COVID-19 crisis that we're going through. So please know that God has not forgotten you, nor has your Fountain of Faith Baptist Church family. Uh, we are a community of faith, along with others who have accepted our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior. Uh, we're praying for our neighbors and the world at large. We do solicit, solicit your prayers for us, uh, as well as uh, your financial support, so that we can continue to make the progress of the gospel a priority. Uh, we thank God for his grace. We thank God for his mercy. I want to share with you as we move forward in our lesson today and begin our time of worship on this great Mother's Day. Uh, from Proverbs 14 and 1. We're all familiar with the Proverbs 31 woman and how virtuous she is, but I think it is summed up in Proverbs 14 and 1. And Proverbs 14 and 1 says this. It says, the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish tears it down with her own hands. Let me read that again, Proverbs 14 and 1. Uh, the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish tears it down with their own hands. May God have his blessing to the hearers and doers of his holy word. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we come before you once again with bowed heads and our hearts on this great Mother's Day. We thank you for this new day, a new day we've never seen before, but a day you've blessed us, graced us out again. Father, we thank you for protecting us, dear Father God, and keeping us, dear Father God, to help watch over the souls of our children. We thank you for this grand day called Mother's Day. We thank you, Father God, for the institution of motherhood, oh God. Uh, we thank you for our mothers that loved us, that cared for us, that prayed over us, oh God. Uh, we pray for mothers right now, dear Father God. Many are, are heartbroken because uh, they, they may, be, may not be able to see the children. They may be ill, dear Father God, or they may be distant from their children. But let them know, dear Father God, you continue to provide. Uh, because you've heard their prayers. 
Father, we pray that you would bless us in a special way today and enable us to understand that uh, you, dear Father God, have exceeded whatever love even a mother could give to Father God because you're always present, you're always near, and you always provide. Now, lead God and direct us to Father God. Help us to put aside any irritations or frustrations we may have encountered throughout the week simply to make space for you in our souls. Father God, when we think about the acronym, again, SPACE. Please direct your Holy Spirit to cause us to ask those very vital questions. Is there a sin that we need to forsake? Is there a promise that we should claim? Is there an attitude we should change? Is there a command we should obey? Certainly in Jesus Christ, there's always the example that we should follow. Please, oh God, give us light. Wherever there's darkness, in the sweet and strong name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. But thank you, saints. Good to be with you today on this great Mother's Day. We want you to continue to be encouraged and be grateful for God and who he is. These of the Lord's mercies will not consume because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And so as we move forward in God's will in this way, if you're willing to receive a word from God, you have to convert. You have to take the written word and, and mix it with the living word, and God will give you a personal word on this day. I'd like to use as a topic today on this Mother's Day message, uh, and it is entitled Mother's Wisdom Rooted in Righteousness. Mother's Wisdom Rooted in righteousness. There's another quote that says this. It says that uh, throughout the ages, no nation has ever had a better friend than the mother who has taught her children to pray. See that again. Throughout the ages, down through the years, no nation has ever had a better friend than the mother who has taught her children to pray. You know an acronym for faith, F-A-I-T-H? It says forwarding all issues to heaven. And certainly we have issues today, along with this crisis we're dealing with, and just uh, daily burdens in general. Prayer is so important. There's no such thing as a perfect parent. But I tell you something here, there is such a thing as a godly parent. And if you would, let me share this with you about what it means to be a godly parent. I want you to never underestimate the thoughtful consideration of a Christian parent. Never underestimate the power that comes when a, a mother pleads with God on behalf of her child. Who knows how many prayers are being answered right now because of the faithful prayers of a mother 10, 20, 30 years ago. Because what? God listens to thoughtful parents. God listens to thoughtful parents. Praying for our children is not only a noble task, it is a divine task. It is a command. If what we're doing uh, in this fast-paced society, there's so much going on. If what we're doing is taking us away from our prayer time for our children, guess what? We're doing too much. We're doing too much if we're not covering our children in prayer. Now, there's nothing more special, nothing more precious than time that it's a parent spent struggling and, and pleading with God on behalf of their child. So I want you to continue to do that. You'll see through our lesson today, you will benefit from that. As a matter of fact, uh, two passages will be in today. We'll be in today, two passages. The first one is uh, 2 Timothy uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, and we'll be in Proverbs uh, the 15th chapter, uh, beginning with verse 20. Proverbs, the 15th chapter, beginning with verse 20. Now, as we prepare to go to that area, I want you to understand something about this awesome Mother's Day that we're celebrating. Uh, God gave mothers the passion that they have for their children. And they would quite literally, you and I know this, they would lay their lives down uh, for their children. Uh, because what God has put something inside of them uh, where they have been entrusted with this awesome care and passion. Uh, they know that it, it, we are, uh, our children are a special gift from the God. So, so that is why we're, uh, uh, they are so deserving of this special day. I had to pause for a moment and make sure we gave them the homage that they deserve. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention my own mother who's been in heaven for some years now. Her name is Gladys Faye Cain. And I miss my mother, but I appreciate and I remember the love and concern and compassion and consideration she often gave to me. Believe it or not, I was a baby in the family. And I also want to acknowledge those surrogate mothers. I had a great aunt, an auntie, not a great aunt, but my auntie. Aunt, her name was Bertha Mae Van Ness, helped to raise me in my teen years. I certainly appreciate what she did on my behalf and the prayer she sent forward on my behalf. And of course, I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge uh, my mother-in-law who's in heaven as well, my wife's mother, Sister, Sister Hattie Mae Clark. Uh, what a wonderful woman she was, and a, and a very inviting smile she always had when I was in her presence. But today, we want to look at the significance of motherhood. And you know, it, it's often found in Scripture. And very popular Scripture that has often been quoted, that's in 2 Timothy 1.5, and I'll read that for you. We all know about the story uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, Timothy uh, and, and his spiritual heritage and spiritual lineage. 
In, in 2 Timothy 1.5, it says this. It says, For I am mindful, Paul writes Timothy, For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I am sure that it is in you as well. That it is in you as well. See, see, Paul was trying to encourage Timothy at this point in time. Timothy had become discouraged in, 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 in the first chapter of Timothy. We are uh, reading from the second chapter of Timothy. But in the first chapter of Timothy, uh, he had become uh, discouraged in Ephesus, at the church in Ephesus. He was getting pressure from some people in the church, as well as apostate people were coming in teaching heresies. And so, uh, as his faith was beginning to wane, Paul wrote him to encourage him. And Paul said, now, as I think about your spiritual heritage and how you were taught at your mother's knee and at your grandmother's knee, what is inside of you will get you through this if you go back to what you've already been taught. And so as we venture into 2 Timothy 1 and 5, follow with me here as we see Grandmother Lois, who had the privilege of seeing the fulfillment of Proverbs 22 and 6 through her, 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 her daughter, Eunice, as well as her grandson, Timothy. In Proverbs 22 and 6, it says what? Train up a child in the way he should go, even when he is old, he will not depart. You see what happened here when Eunice was uh, got older in life. Uh, uh, she, she departed for a moment herself, but she came back. And she remembered the spiritual heritage that her, grand, that her mother Lois had given to her. And she applied it to her life. And the same thing is going to happen with Timothy here. And as Lois began to move forward in the spiritual high ground, she passed this on to the next generation, her son, Timothy. So Eunice... Uh, trained Timothy in the word and Timothy was saved and he grew up spiritually in a very remarkable way as we can see today. We have two books about Timothy. Uh, and here the apostle Paul had taken him as a protege, as an understudy here. And Paul is at the end of his life basically and so he's trying to encourage Timothy to carry on the work that he has begun on behalf of the Lord. So we see Timothy's mother before him. Uh, she overcame her crisis and so would Timothy himself. Now we see something beautiful happening here with God's grace and God's mercy in this family. Uh, Timothy was able to acknowledge his, his faith as his mother did at for a brief moment, but he kept his eyes, his eyes on the Lord. We talked about that briefly last week in Red Sea Rule uh, number three. Acknowledge your, your circumstance or your enemy, but keep your eyes on the Lord. And here is one of the most beautiful patterns of grace that helps to explain the great concept of following God in history. What am I saying here? Three generations related physically. Grandmother, mother, and son. But you know what's most important about that? Not so much the biology of it all, but the spiritual heritage. We have three generations going from what? Saving grace, to living grace, to greater grace, and eventually to dying grace. And when you get to see the Lord, surpassing grace. All of this is grace, because that's who God is. And why do we have grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. Three generations in the same family. The same can be true of your family as well as mine. Parents who have been faithful in teaching their children sound Bible doctrine, laying a foundation, then giving them roots and wings. Don't you feel bad if your child decides to go away with it and you've taught them the right way. You've done all you're supposed to do. And in due time, God will bring them back. They, he will allow them to go through the discipline that's necessary. He will sustain them. Why? All because of the prayers that you sent forward on their behalf. And so God wants us to understand from this passage here uh, that God has great things in store for our children. But we have to continue to cover them, not only in prayer, but with his word. And so we go back uh, to uh, first, uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 5. Let's, let's break this particular verse down. It says, For I am mindful of the sin sincere faith within you, Paul tells Timothy. I know you're discouraged right now, but remember what's already inside of you. God has given each person a measure of faith. And really, all you need is mustard seed faith. And as you water that faith with God's word and his Holy Spirit, you begin to see how God will do mighty things through your life. And so, mothers, we see here, it says, when I call to remembrance. In other words, Paul is saying in 2 Timothy 1.5, he say, I'm mindful of this one thing. And Paul is using a figure of speech here, an idiom, if you will. He said, when I remember, when I recall, uh, Paul is talking about how uh, uh, your mother recovered and how you can recover from a fall of grace. Don't get into a pity party. He says, I know things are pretty rough right now, but remember who God is. Uh, remember your faith. What is faith? Faith is deliberate confidence in the character of God. It, it doesn't matter who we are. If we're limited, thank God we can take our concerns to a God that has no limitations. And so this is what Paul is saying to Timothy now. Uh, he said, Timothy, remember, uh, if you turn back to the Lord and stay with the Lord, uh, uh, you can apply the same faith that your grandmother and your mother did. 
this unfeigned faith it talks about in 2 Timothy 1 uh, and 5. He says that, for I am mindful of the sincere faith, the unfeigned faith, uh, the unhypocritical faith, the true faith, the genuine faith. This is what he means when he says sincere faith. It means not speaking from under a mask. And we all are wearing a mask today, but this was related to drama, to uh, the arts that they had when the people would put on masks to put on drama plays. He says that the faith that you have is real. The faith that your mom had, that your grandmother had is real. He says, I, I know you have an unfeigned faith, uh, unhypocritical faith, a faith that's not false, a faith that is not fake. You got a lot of people that have fake faith. They have false faith. They have fickle faith. And we're seeing a lot of that in uh, in the church today, evangelical field, uh, realms today. But Paul is saying, I know you have genuine faith. So, so it means that uh, you don't have to act it out in terms of being not true. Your faith is real and genuine. And this faith, he says, this is a faith that believes in something. Every faith has an object. And the question is, what is the object of your faith? Is God's word the object of your faith? Well, parents, this is what we're supposed to teach our children today. The significance of the object of our faith. Uh, God is telling us, and I love one of my favorite quotes from Adrian Rogers is this. God says, his provision is found in his promises, and God's wealth is found in his word. God's provisions are found in his promises, and God's wealth is found in his word. And so this is what Paul is reminding Timothy of. We, here we have Paul, and once again, at the end of his ministry. This is a dying man. You know what? A dying man tells no tales. A dying man tells no tales. Paul is saying, Timothy, I know what's inside of you. Go back to what has been laid in you, that foundation. And what does the word of God say in 1 Corinthians 3.11? No foundation can any man lay other than that which is Christ Jesus. So the foundation has been laid. And he says, I want you to continue to build on that. Because the Bible says, he that began a good work in you, get what will he do? He will complete it. He's saying, now that the faith in you which has dwelt. What he's saying? He says, now that faith that is within you, that faith is in a certain place. It's in sin his soul. Which first dwelt, he said, remember your spiritual heritage, in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. In your, in your grandmother, Lois, and, and, and your mother, Eunice. So, so Paul is telling us something very important here. That faith, and faith also means Bible doctrine. It means God's word. It doesn't just mean uh, some kind of faith that has no object. Faith always has an object. He's talking about God's word inside of you. We have to have an a, 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 a indwelt, a, 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 like, a, like a doctor on call. People need doctors today very much so. Uh, consider what's going on. But you know what God's word serves as? He serves, uh, it serves as like a, a resident doctor on call to heal your soul when you begin to hurt. So Paul is saying, I know what's inside of you. The same faith that was in your grandmother that's, that was also in your mother. And this same faith will bring you to great victory over your trials and tribulations that you have right now. He says, not only that, Paul says, I'm, I'm confident. He says, I'm sure about this thing. And a dying man tells no tells. The best things that parents can leave their children is God's word in their soul. That's why I love John 3, 1 and 4. And when John says, my greatest joy is to know that my children are walking in truth. My greatest joy is to know that my children are walking in truth. So if we had uh, to break down what this verse is really saying, Paul is saying, when I recall the real word that's inside of you, uh, this same word that first resided in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, he said, Paul says, then I am confident that the word that's inside of you will prevail. The word that's inside of you will prevail. That's what we need to be excited about. What God is going to do with our children when we make his word a priority in their lives. And so there's a, a few things we need to know and, and, and review about what's important about being a good mother. There's a few qualities I want to share with you that are uh, entitled qualities of a mother uh, that her children can trust. Are we imparting to our children uh, 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 these principles to live by, these virtues that they can trust? And there are verses to go with this. When you download the lesson on the uh, on the website, you'll be able to print out this lesson. And there are verses to go along with it. I'm just gonna I'm gonna read out the principles. Here are seven qualities of a mother that our children can trust. Can your children trust these qualities in your mom, grandma? Uh, it says she is a Christian mother who personally received Jesus Christ as her savior and leads her children to Him as well. First of all, you have a personal relationship with God, and not only that. You lead your children to Christ also. The most important thing you can do is lead your children to Christ. The worst thing you can do is never share the gospel with your children because you risk never seeing them again. Point two, talking about qualities of a mother that her children can trust. Uh, she is devoted to her husband. Uh, she responds to his love and expresses her inner beauty without competition to his delegated headship in the home. 
Now, God has delegated the man, the husband, to be the head in the home. And God is saying now, hopefully, you're winning him over with your word. Hopefully, you're winning him over with your countenance. Because women, uh, God has given to be responders. And hopefully, you've married a man uh, that you can honor. But God is saying, this is his divine design. Uh, qualities of a mother that her children can trust. Uh, number three, she constantly prays over her children. Knowing that her battles are waged on her knees as the Lord hears and answers her prayers. Because he said he would. We often quote Hebrews 4.16 which says, Let us come boldly with confidence before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Uh, fourth quality says, Her love is shown by the godly instruction that she gives and the respect that she insists from her children. Yes, mothers, you're going to love your children, but you also want to insist that they respect you as well. And so this has uh, to be something that you don't welch on. God is saying, yeah, it's important that uh, you know that they will love you in time. But most importantly, you need to know that they respect you. Point five says, she makes her home a priority as she prepares the family to meet tomorrow's and, and while she's managing the household and blessing others with her gifts. Now, it's important to make the home a priority. Sure, we all have our careers, we have our jobs, but we should never put our careers or our jobs over our home life. God has called us to raise and conduct children in this manner so that we might protect the family unit. Point six, her children witness her genuine praise for the Lord throughout her life. As a child is going through life day by day, she sees that you have a right and genuine relationship with the Lord. Finally, point seven says, she is an honor to her family and praised by her husband and children. They not only love her, but they trust her and her devotion to God. That's very important. We'll briefly go over to Proverbs uh, 15. In Proverbs 15, we're going to look at a few verses beginning with verse uh, 20 through 26. I, I love what this says about the path that we should keep our children on as we move forward because it's entitled a mother's wisdom rooted in righteousness. Now, if we're going to get our, give our children a solid foundation, give them roots, and give them wings, it's important that all of that results in them being wise. First wise thing they can do is, is accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. The next wise thing they can do is to take in his word and begin to grow. Uh, they're going to have knocks and bruises along the way, but as they do that, the Holy Spirit will correct them and point them in the right direction. So what it says here in Proverbs 15, uh, verse 20, it says, A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. Verse 21 says, Folly is joy to him who lacks sense, but a man of understanding walks straight. Verse 22 of Proverbs 15 says, Without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors they succeed. We need to keep around our children uh, uh, mentors that have a right relationship with the Lord. We need to make sure our children are congregating or have a relationship with people that are in line with your values, people that are in line with your God. Uh, verse 23 says, a man has joy in, apt, in an apt answer, or in a right answer, uh, and how delightful is a timely word. Teach your children to be encouragers. Verse 24 says, the path of life leads upward for the wise, but he may keep away from shield. See, if, you, if he's going on the right path, the word shield means hell. If, if he's going the right way, that will keep his foot out of the dangers of, dangers of hell. Finally, verse 25, it says, The Lord will tear down the house of the proud, but he will establish the boundary of the widow. The Lord will tear down the house of the proud, but he will establish uh, the boundary of the widow. I certainly want you to understand what God is telling us here. This verse is referring to parents with have great plans for the children. Uh, you, you know what? We tell our children, if you just marry the right person, you're going to be all right. You get the right career. Things are going to work out well. But if you don't share God's word with them, share God's person with them, all of that will be in vain. They'll be writing their own book of Ecclesiastes. Nothing. Fruitfulness. So God is telling us here now, it's so important that we make sure they have the right priorities. Even share with your children. Say, even though you're my child biologically, the most important uh, uh, child will be is to be an adopted child. And thank God we have that new birth where we can be born again in Christ Jesus. Here's what it says in John 1.12. It says, but to all who believe him and accepted him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. You see, adopted children are chosen children. 
Now, that's not the case with biological children. As I close, understand this, when the doctor handed uh, uh, me to my dad or to my mom, they didn't have an option. They couldn't give me back to the doctor. That wasn't a loophole. They didn't have a choice. Uh, uh, see, uh, my, my mom couldn't give me back to the doctor and ask for a better looking baby or a smarter son. She couldn't do that. Uh, the hospital made her take me home because I was hers, biologically. But that's not the same way if you're adopted here. God adopts every believer into his kingdom. You see, if you are adopted, I want you to consider this, uh, your, your parents choose you. Uh, there's such things as surprise pregnancies, but there's no such thing as a surprise adoption. That's a choice being made, and God made a choice to choose and include us. It says, from the foundation of the world, he made provisions for us. We simply need to accept what he has provided. Uh, see, parents that adopt children, they, they, they want uh, you, you may object. You say, oh, but if they, they would have seen the rest of my life, they, they probably would have changed their minds. God is the only one that knows the worst about us and loves us the most. He knows the worst about us and loves us the most. This is what you need to share with your children, why they need to accept Jesus Christ, uh, why they need to become a, a member of the family of God uh, because of the love of the Father. That's my point exactly. God saw our entire lives beginning from, from beginning to end, from birth to hearse. He saw our lives. So in spite of that, he was still convinced to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself. How? Through Jesus Christ. This is what I want you to do. I want you to have the great pleasure that God offers you. Talks about that in Ephesians 1 and 5. Uh, we can now live like God's very own children, adopted into the bosom of his family, calling him Father, Abba, Daddy. And since we are his children, we will share in his treasures because he's given us his righteousness. That's what the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might obtain the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Talking about mother's wisdom that needs to be rooted in God's righteousness. So as I finally close, for everything that God gives us, God is saying, I want you to share with others as well. The question is, will we accept his offer? Because he's calling you now. Let's thank God for his grace and his mercy as we go before the throne of grace to close out. Father, we thank you on this awesome Mother's Day. We thank you for the gift of motherhood. We thank you for the love and compassion that, Father God, that you have ingrained in them to share with us. Father, we pray that you watch over those that are hurting right now today that may not be able to be with their mothers. But we pray that they would feel your presence and know that you have the love of the Father and the Mother in you, O oh God. Father, we pray that, that those that don't know you, that are looking for a family, think they're not worth being in a family. Let them know that you are reaching out with open arms. You said, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, God, bless us in a special way on this special day. In the sweet and strong name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Once again, I'm Pastor Mark Kane of Fountain of Faith Baptist Church. We're located at 7887 Beechnut Street, Houston, Texas, 77074. We look forward to you joining us in the very near future. God bless you. God keep you. Happy Mother's Day.